Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video, I'd like to speak with you about the Tesla semi truck versus diesel. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services. As always, guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep on coming and let's talk about the Tesla semi truck versus diesel. Guys, uh, I know that I uh, haven't been around for the Sunday lives lately and the reason for that and the reason also for this video being late I'm going to blame these guys for it is that I got to attend a beautiful wedding in Colorado. Uh, certainly a big uh, a congratulations to the beautiful couple of Catalina and Jack. I'll definitely route them to this video. And if you have any well wishes for the newlyweds, please leave them in the comment section below, especially those of you guys who have had some really good uh, positive and even negative experiences that maybe you could kind of send their way to get them prepared. Nonetheless, guys, uh, during this trip, I had to rent a vehicle and it ended up being an electric vehicle. I had to stick with uh, my guns and ended up getting a Chevy Silverado EV, which is an equivalent to like a Chevy 1500, uh, you know, gas or like a 5.7 liter, something like that. Now, uh, that really got me thinking about electric semis. Now, I know over the years we've covered uh, this ad nauseum, had several videos on different manufacturers, different companies, different, uh, you know, company leaders, if you will, and kind of followed the, uh, you know, the automation, the AI, the robotics and the automated uh, electric vehicle kind of market. Now, this also, you know, kind of got me thinking about these electric semi trucks. And although I absolutely loved the, the, the electric pickup truck, just different from a semi truck, I'm here to tell you that you have nothing to worry about. Now, here are some issues that I've done some research on after that, once this idea kind of came to mind. And here's where I, uh, what, where I concluded with. Once you took a, a, a Tesla semi truck, you ran it at 70 miles an hour, you actually had a 28.4% drop in the range. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, Tesla gives you a 500 mile uh, range out, out of the battery. What a 28.4% drop, you go down to 358 miles. Now, why is that? It's because they tested it below 60 miles an hour. Once you come up to highway speeds at 70 miles an hour, which is about right where everyone else drives, give or take, you uh, drop to 358 mile range. Now, moving forward, there's an issue because you have to charge these things, right? And it's not as simple or available as a diesel station. So there's a, a major lack of mega chargers. And a me mega charger is basically a supercharger, fast charging, but for semi truck use. Total lack of those things. Now, when I uh, was in, uh, in Colorado, I was driving this Chevy. Now, the Chevy does have a very large battery, it's a, like, almost a 9,000 pound vehicle. Uh, a total work truck at a 200 kilowatt hour battery, quite large. Now, in contrast, the Tesla Semi is a little over 900 kilowatt hours. So that's, all, you know, more than four times, four and a half times larger uh, battery capacitance. I got to charge using level two, which was the best thing that Breckenridge had to offer and level three or DCFC, which is a fast charger, the supercharger stuff. Now they had some much better ones, but I, you know, the one that I was at was uh, quite fast and certainly good enough for what I needed. Now. Let's take a look at some of these numbers. You know, if you had your Tesla, you had a delivery out in Breckenridge, for example, you got up there and you saw mountains, I-70, and uh, you ended up, uh, you know, low on, low on charge, it would actually take you 3.75 days, almost four days or 90 hours to get from zero to 100%, considering the, the drop in charge uh, speed once you hit 80% and get to 100, uh, that would actually take you even more. I think maybe an even four days if you really wanted to push it and go from zero to 100. So you'd have to take four days off just to be able to charge that full semi truck at that level two. Uh, now the level three much faster would do it 10 times faster. I was getting a little over 100 uh, kilowatt hours. So that would actually get you about nine hours, you'd be done. Or, you know, maybe, you know, once it slows down, maybe it'll take 10 or 11 hours. So certainly a lot faster, but 11 hours, uh, is just way too long 
for a charge that'll only get you about three, 400 miles out there, right? So charge time and battery degradation is gonna be an issue, uh, especially in, you have to consider the commercial use of this. We're not gonna be driving 100,000 miles a year. We're gonna be driving these things at a million miles. And so that degradation is gonna happen uh, faster and it's gonna hit you even harder. Now I looked at the cost of the EV and granted I only drove about 300 miles, but I broke down the cost and the numbers, uh, the numbers for charging the vehicle ended up being a 14 cents to the mile. Well. Uh, a gas equivalent would, you know, break break down at about 19 cents to the mile. I think because it was I-70 mountains and maybe a little bit of aggressive driving, 25 cents to, uh, to the mile. So yeah, the gas or costs uh, to fill up and, and a general operating costs are higher versus an EV, uh, but nonetheless, nothing to write home about, especially considering the high cost of electric vehicles, especially for a pickup truck. So certainly. Uh, this will lead to major operational downtime because you're constantly charging. It's not really saving you much money. You're, you, you know, you're constantly doing stops and you're always anxious about whether you're going to be able to make it to your pickup or your delivery destination. So major issues there. Then you have uh, the total truck weight, right? You, your, your typical diesel truck's going to be about 17,000 pounds on a bobtail, about 19,000 pounds on, uh, on the trailer weight. And the Tesla is going to be real similar, about the same weight plus 10,000 pounds for the battery. So you're at 27,000 pounds for just the bobtail alone. And unlike a diesel truck, it doesn't go down in weight when you have less diesel, right? More or less diesel, you could fill up and uh, get pick up a, a load of a different weight. Can't do that with a Tesla at 27,000 pounds uh, weight of just the uh, uh, bobtail alone. So uh, then there's another issue, and we've covered this in detail in a previous video. I'll try to dig it up and leave a little card in the corner, but it's a, the very high total cost of ownership. So you do save money, but it has to take a long time, and it's based on maintenance. But considering the cost of ownership and the very high cost of acquisition, you're ultimately going to you know pay up the wazoo, and then going to have to take a long time before you can actually you know get that money back and start saving some uh, some money there. And ultimately, guys, if you're interested, my take on this entire uh, electric vehicle. Uh, situation is that if you're in a major city, uh, you know, these things are going to work out really well. If you have a level two charger installed in your home, it's going to work really well. You're pretty much for most people going to be always on a fully charged battery if you don't forget to plug in. And if you don't still has plenty of juice, uh, major cities are going to be fine. Smaller towns, not so much. Uh, but for semi truck use, uh, for commercial use at best, maybe local, maybe box trucks, stuff like that. Sure. Regional and OTR, absolutely none. Hands down, the diesel truck wins. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so yet, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. And if you have some well wishes for Jack and Catalina, leave them in the comment section below as well. I'll make sure they get pinged about that. For now, I'm gonna switch over the camera. We'll look over the loads that we book for our customers and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads. Guys, this week we have a pretty good mix of vans, reefers, and a flatbed. Everyone did quite well, but I will say this, whether electric or diesel, top dollar is always welcome. So let's get started with Milagres and his 53 foot dry van. Did a big one, five picks, one drop, coming out of Salmas, California, Oxnard, California, Los Angeles. Uh, Vernon, California, and a final pick in Long Beach, California. One drop in Temple, Texas. It's a light load, 26,000 pounds of groceries at 34 degrees on a reefer. It was actually booked at $4,700 initially, but there was a lot of uh, you know work with so much, uh, so many uh, picks in the first place. So there was actually uh, detention at the shipper, detention at the receiver, and we also got a layover out of it. Uh, so that was $853 in total. So 1,505 loaded miles booked in uh, $5,533.75. Got them 368 a loaded mile. So it's super important. You got to know where you're coming, where you're going, where the markets are, and how much to charge so that you don't, uh, you know, underprice, but also don't overshoot the target. Because on the next load out of Fort Worth, Texas, take a load to Bloomington, Indiana. A wonderful market is going to certainly see some good money coming out next week. And it was also a light load, 30,000 pounds of mayonnaise and different sauces, 35 degrees on a reefer, 901 loaded miles, booked to 1,600 bucks, got him an impressive buck 78. That's a tough market to come out and into Indiana. So he's gonna do really well next week. Friday to Friday, Milagros uh, were on only two loads. I uh, ended up grossing $7,153.75. Uh, ran a total of 2,406 loaded miles, uh, booked at a 297 a loaded mile. So an excellent, excellent job. And next week is looking up too. Uh, next, we got Patrick and his 53 foot flatbed coming out of North Las Vegas, Nevada, going to East Wenatchee, Washington. It's a 17,000 pound light load for a flatbed. 
It's a load of steel bundles, no tarping required, 1,035 loaded miles booked at 2225, got them 215 a loaded mile. Then out of Pasco, Washington to Bronx, New York, it's a full load of onions loaded to scale, so uh, they're gonna be quite heavy. Tarps were required on this one, but it is a lot of miles, 2,701 loaded mile, booked at 5,500 bucks, got them 204 a loaded mile on that one. I think that's an excellent job coming out to New York. Tuesday to Tuesday, $7,725 in gross, uh, ran 3,736 loaded miles at 207 per loaded mile average. An excellent job, Patrick, way to go. Next we got Justin, is a drive-in, uh, uh, running 53 foot drive-in, uh, Granada, Mississippi to Durango, Colorado, 42,000 pound load of wood uh, shavings, 1,318 loaded miles booked at 2850, got them 216 a loaded mile. They had a Durango, a tough, tough market to come out of Chandler, uh, Arizona, uh, Chandler, uh, it's a very light load, only 1,900 pounds, so super light load, load of uh, machinery parts. 440 loaded miles, booked at 800 bucks, got them a buck 82, not bad at all, coming out of Durango. That's an excellent job. And then Goodyear, Arizona, going to Ankeny, Iowa. It's a 40,000 pound load of FAK, 1,426 loaded miles, booked at 2,750, got them a dollar 93 a loaded mile on that one. All in all, Justin did a great job. Friday to Friday, seven days on a road, $6,400 in gross. Ran 3,184 loaded miles booked at 201, a loaded mile average. So an excellent job there as well. Next, we have Manuel uh, with a 40, uh, no, 53 foot drive van coming out of uh, Plover, Wisconsin, going to Fort Ward, Texas. 44,396 pound load of mixed foods, 1,100 miles on the dot booked at 2270, got them 206 a loaded mile. Then right out of Fort Worth, Texas, zero deadhead coming out to Midwest City, Oklahoma, light load, 14,000 pounds of office supplies, 200 miles on the dot booked at 675, got them 338 a loaded mile, and finished off with that uh, Granite, Oklahoma, going to Harrisonburg, Virginia. It's a 44,200 pound load of uh, Winterizer uh, 70, some sort of agricultural product. 1,340 loaded miles, booked out at 2,800 bucks, got them in uh, 209 a loaded mile. So here's the interesting part. So manual ran Friday to Friday, uh, ended up actually having a 34 hour reset included in the in this week, gross $5,545 in gross in seven days, ran 2,640 loaded miles at an average of 218 per loaded mile average. So an absolutely excellent job, sir. The gross is a little bit lower, but very, very efficient and very effective. So, and some, you know, lighter freight here and there for a shorter run. So excellent job. Then uh, we have Jacob uh, running a 53 foot dry van coming out of uh, Silverstone, Oregon and uh, Shed, Oregon. Two pick, one drop to Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, it's a 42,000 pound load of FAK, 2,823 loaded miles. Booked that at $5,100, got him $1.81 a loaded mile. Then Mount Crawford, Virginia to Ansonia, Ohio with a 45,000 pound load of food products. 473 loaded miles, booked at 850 bucks, got him $1.80 on that one. And then Winchester, Indiana to Wilson, North Carolina with a 39,000 pound load of glass bottles and jars. 617 loaded miles, booked at 1550, got him 251 a loaded mile. All in all, an excellent job. Friday to Friday, $7,500 in gross. Uh, ended up running 3,913 loaded miles at an average of $1.92 per loaded mile. He did lose a day with a second load of food. Uh, the load got shifted and the trailer required a washout, unfortunately. So there is that included. So, But he still managed to uh, grow 7,500 bucks, just under two bucks a mile with excellent amount of of of, uh, of miles on there coming out of North Carolina next week. So an excellent job to Jacob. And last but certainly not least, gonna talk to uh, talk about Rogelio, 53 foot dry van coming out of West Memphis, Arkansas, going to Portland, Oregon. Super light load, 6,000 pound load of conveyors, 2,244 loaded miles, booked at 39.95, got him $1.78 a loaded mile. Then right out of Portland, Oregon, zero dead ahead to Lehigh, Utah. It's a 34,000 pound load of liquid paint, although it was non-hazardous material, 793 loaded miles booked at 1465 got him a dollar 85 a loaded mile there then draper utah uh to uh, tempe arizona draper's right there is practically no deadhead uh it's a 39,000 pound load of palletized beverages 655 loaded miles booked at 850 bucks got him a dollar 30 to come out to arizona uh for next week ran thursday to thursday uh gross 6310 in gross 
uh, ran 3,692 loaded miles and got that an average of $1.71 a loaded mile. An excellent job no, e either way. Welcome back and thanks for sticking around. Guys, whether you're electric or diesel, a higher rate per mile and a higher gross is always welcome. Wouldn't you agree? So if you're not making this type of money or the type of money we've been talking about for years and years and years, every single week, Friday at 5.30, we've been putting out these videos, doing our live shows, showing you guys that even when the markets are down, you can make top dollar under all market conditions. If you'd like to learn more, it's very simple. Call or text us at 801-448-6363 or visit us online at aftdispatch.com. Carriers and owner operators are certainly welcome. And until next week, guys, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care, bye-bye.